Are your back and butt feeling sore after a long day of riding on your cruiser? Well, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to talk about shocks. When it comes to deciding what shocks to buy, there's a fair amount of options and different styles to choose from, so I'm going to walk you through some of those today. To be clear, we're looking at cruisers here, your Harleys and your Indians. Other bikes need shocks too, but they're different enough that we'll dive into those another day. Before we get started, let's get some of the basics about shocks out of the way so we understand exactly what we're talking about. Mostly when we talk about shocks, we're thinking about how comfortable they keep us. But it's also the job of shocks to keep us on the road. Our wheels don't do much good if they're bouncing in the air like cheerleaders at a ball game. Shocks need to compress to absorb bumps on the road and then quickly rebound to help our wheels maintain traction. Unfortunately, manufacturers often use shocks as a place to cut corners since they all pretty much look the same from the outside and there's no sexy horsepower specs attached to them. In this video, I'll talk about some of the basics you'll need to consider in picking out rear shocks for your cruiser, and we'll look at some of the most popular ones out there. This isn't a comprehensive review by any means, so please don't consider my recommendations to be the final word. First, let's look at how motorcycle shocks work. There's two major parts to a rear shock, the coil, which is the outer spring, and the internal damper that you can't see. When there's a bump in the road or a rapid deceleration, such as when you're stopping or going into a corner, the spring contracts to absorb the force. This force is converted into heat and dissipated through the body of the shock. Because springs like to bounce, the damper is necessary to keep the bike from flying into the air. A shock without a damper is like a pogo stick, fine for kids in the driveway, but not okay for your bike flying down the interstate. This damper is a piston that moves up and down in a chamber filled with oil and nitrogen gas. The oil moves from one side of the chamber to the other as the shock compresses while the nitrogen gas is there to absorb some of the compression. Both of them work together to help dissipate that heat generated by the coil and the damper. So with that out of the way, let's dive into the specifics. When it comes to picking out a new set of shocks, the first thing we need to consider is shock length. The length refers to the actual physical length of the shock from eyelet to eyelet. The length is set by the manufacturer and not changeable. The exception to this is on higher end shocks, sometimes you can extend the length. On my bike, an Indian Scout 60, the OEM length, by the way, OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer, is 11.5 inches. If you own the bobber version of the Scout, your OEM length is 11 inches. The maximum length of shock you can use on the Scout is 12 inches. Each bike is different, so you want to check the manufacturer's specs to see what's recommended for your bike. For the most part, you're best off sticking to the OEM length. A longer shock does give you slightly more travel, which in theory does translate to a smoother ride. The difference though between an 11.5 inch shock and a 12 inch works out to about a quarter inch of travel. Not really enough to matter. Changing your shock length, however, can change your ability to handle turns since changing the height in the back will change the angle of your forks to the ground. Again, will a half inch difference change much one way or the other? Probably not, but you can always check it out and report back to me. A term you'll often hear riders discuss is, quote, preload, as in adjusting your preload. When you sit on your bike, the bike sags downward as you weight it with your body. The amount of this sag should equal the specifications set by the shock manufacturer so that you give the shock enough room to both compress and decompress as you hit bumps on the road. Too much sag and you'll bottom out. Too little and you'll top out and end up with your butt in the air. You can adjust the sag by tightening or loosening the coil spring on your shock. When you tighten the coil on your bike, you make it stiffer so that it supports more weight without compressing. This is known as adjusting the preload or setting the sag. This doesn't change the length of the shock, just how stiff the coils are so your bike will sit just right with your body weight. Typically, you'll have one setting for riding the bike on your own and then a stiffer setting for riding with a passenger. Now let's take a look at some different shocks. The first shock here is the Indian Scout OEM shock. It's notoriously rough. First, notice the all steel construction. As I mentioned before, shocks generate heat when they're working. Steel unfortunately retains heat, which means the pressure in the shock increases the longer you're riding. Increased pressure means that the shock can absorb less force, which makes for a bumpier ride. 
One thing you will notice about this shock is how the distance between the coils vary. At the top, they're farther apart, and at the bottom, they're closer together. The purpose of this is that the smaller coils are there to absorb the smaller bumps, while the bigger coils are there to absorb the larger bumps. In practice, on this shock, however, it doesn't work out so well. Every bump is transmitted to the rider, and you get a rough ride at the end of the day. Next up, we've got a fairly inexpensive upgrade to the OEM shock. It's the Progressive 413, which sells for about $300 and change. You'll notice it's got more coil spring than the OEM. From the reports I've read, you'll definitely feel a softer ride over the stock shaft. On the downside, it is made from steel, so once it heats up, performance will go down. This is fine for shorter rides around town, but for day-long rides, your butt and your back will likely be feeling the difference. One of the most popular shocks for cruisers, and especially the Indian Scout, is the Progressive 444 shock. At about $600, it's a middle price range shock. The shock itself is made from aluminum, which allows it to dissipate heat quickly and prevent it from heating up. This makes for a shock that will keep on working no matter how long or how hard you put it to work. You'll note the springs are tightly wrapped at the bottom, and then they progressively become more loose as you go towards the top. Shocks with varying width coils are referred to as progressive, since they progressively get tighter as you head down the shock. The benefit is that smaller bumps are picked up by tighter coils, and the bigger potholes are smoothed out by the looser coils. Inside the shock, Progressive has what it calls its frequency sensing technology. These are different sized valves that sense the frequency and intensity of the bumps and divots as you travel and open and close accordingly. The end result is a shock that will adapt to meet the conditions on the road and give you a smoother ride no matter what the terrain is. One more benefit is that you can adjust this shock's preload by hand. No tools are necessary. You've got to give it a little bit of elbow grease, but it's mostly doable. This comes in handy so you don't have to go digging through your toolbox to add a passenger for your afternoon ride. Most other shocks require a special tool for preload adjustments. Not the end of the world, but it does add a couple of steps, which in general means you're less likely to do them. Now, many high-end shocks will have a dampening adjustment that allows the user to adjust the shock for a specific type of terrain. For example, if the rider is going to be traveling over a bumpy road, they can set the shock to a softer setting. If the ride is going to be on a more uniform surface, like the track, then it can be harder. The 444 shock doesn't have this adjustment mechanism because its variable valves automatically adapt to different terrain. The lack of a dampening adjustment in this case isn't necessarily a negative, it's actually a sign of a benefit that you'll feel, not see. Now, the next step up from the 444 shock is a remote reservoir style shock, such as the Olin's or Racing Brothers. Now, this may be a step up in price, but not necessarily performance, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Anyhow, these shocks come in at about the $1,000 price point. The reservoir offers the advantage of giving the oil in the shock a place to go when you're traveling at high, high speeds, 100 miles an hour or over, or if you're landing a big jump. In these extreme situations, the shock compresses so quickly that the internal mechanisms can't handle the oil moving so rapidly. The oil has no place to go, so it blocks the shock from fully compressing. When you're flying along at breakneck speed, that's obviously not good. The reservoir helps out by giving the oil inside the shock a place to quickly move to so that the internal damper can compress freely. Also, notice how the coil on the reservoir shocks is not progressive. The coil remains the same width from top to bottom. If you're racing on the track, you want to know that your shock is going to perform consistently around every corner. Since progressive shocks change how they perform based on inputs, bumps in the road or speed of the bike, they're actually less desirable for the high performance required in racing. In general, reservoir style shocks may be great for racing, but they may not offer the same level of comfort as an all-around shock intended for cruising. Now for all you Indian Scout riders, there's one more shock that I think I should chime in on, and that's the Indian branded shock by Fox that sells for just over $900. It's a non-reservoir shock with a reservoir price tag. Now I'm sure it's a fine shock, but the question is, is it worth the extra $300 over the 444? That's an open question, but in my opinion, I doubt it. Regardless of what shock you buy for your cruiser, 
Keep in mind that you're getting the best of less than an optimal situation. The travel on any of these shocks is about two inches, give or take a quarter of an inch. That's not a lot of travel to absorb all the divots and insults that the road has to throw at you. This holds true with cruisers in general, from my Indian Scout to a Harley Street Glide. For comparison, the Honda Africa Twin, which is my dream adventure bike, has a ridiculous 8.7 inches of travel. That's a heck of a lot more cushion than you'll ever see on a butt bruiser, I mean cruiser. For all around cruising, the 444 seems to me to be the best option. The price is right, and it's designed to keep you as comfortable as possible throughout a long day in the saddle. I won't deny though that reservoir style shocks look cool, so if that's the look you want and you've got the cash, go for it. Just don't expect to get a comfier ride at the end of the day. That's it for today's video on shocks. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and follow my YouTube channel. Your support will help my videos get picked up by YouTube's algorithm so other people can enjoy them and I can keep producing them. Stay safe, enjoy the ride.